Pops Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets a standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my good friend, fellow podcaster, Kelly Crandall with Racer Magazine to the show. What's uh, what's going on, Kelly? Here you're on the on the road to Talladega. Yeah, about to be here soon. Another exciting weekend now that I can take a break from writing all this schedule news. So I'm ready for racing once again. Yeah, well, and schedule news. I guess that, that's the big thing. I told you. I said we got. We got. I text you and say we got to get you on this week because, wow, I, I got to say this is probably the first time in a long time I'm really, really excited about the NASCAR schedule. I'm not saying that I don't get excited about NASCAR, but the schedule has been pretty vanilla the past uh, few years. And uh, I got to tell you, this one's got me excited. They they threw everybody for a loop. Yeah, the word that Ben Kennedy and Steve O'Donnell used the other day was bold. They they used that a few times. Bold. And they wanted to really evolve the schedule and shake it up. And they've been talking about this for the past couple of years, but haven't really done it. I, I think normally when the schedule would come out, it'd be a date change here or a date change there. But all the tracks have been the same for years. I mean, five years, 10 years, 15 years. I mean, you can go on, go online and pull up the schedule from 2004 or 2000 or whatever it is. And by and large, the schedules are, are mostly the same when it comes to the racetracks. So to actually see them, move races to bring in new venues to change a format like at indianapolis or bristol with the dirt i i think they get a lot they should get a lot of credit because they actually have now taken the step to make the schedule different this is going to be completely different than what we've seen the past couple of years well and i think you know even you know i guess we can kind of break that break this down a little bit because i definitely want to key in on bristol dirt at some point but i think the biggest thing for me is is a fan of motorsports in general is it's like when they made the call for uh the roval at charlotte it was something different but i think a lot of people went well if you're going to add a road course and i know there was kind of you know it was charlotte it's you know the, there was already a date there but I, a lot of us go you know if you're going to add a road course we've got these amazing facilities in this country that get don't you know get used but once or twice a year why aren't we going to road america why aren't we going to circuit of americas and i know there's a lot of politics involved things like that but i i feel like NASCAR took that to heart, and now it took them a couple of years, but now we're seeing some of the best road courses in the country, some of them in the world, now being on, put on the NASCAR schedule. Like That's got me excited, and not only that, but we've gone from three to six now. This is this is huge. I mean, this is there's a complete different dynamic into the way that teams approach the NASCAR series because the road courses kind of, you know, it was one of those where, yeah, they, they were important, but they weren't that really that important because it was only two races on the calendar, but now six, that's a big chunk. They've got a really constant straight on their road setups well you have to remember nascar handcuffed themselves a little bit when they did that five-year track sanctioning agreement so they really couldn't change much and that's why i think you saw a, a change they could make was the date that they had at charlotte they turned that into a role well now that that agreement is up you're seeing the fact that they can actually go to new venues so you get a road america you get a coda the indianapolis road course so yeah to their credit they knew they had to wait kind of until this agreement was up to really start making bigger moves but they tried to kind of appease people by throwing the roll in there it was something different but there was still that call for you know we need more of a balance on the schedule between intermediates road courses and short tracks so i think right now it's definitely a move in the direction of the road courses because we've doubled those and 
the biggest thing to, to take in is that Steve O'Donnell said, you know, look, we're not done. There's still 2022 they're already looking at and beyond. So for the people who are saying, well, it's great we've got all these road courses, but what about short tracks? What about really kind of balancing the schedule out between all of these, you know, these three different types of racetracks? That's, that's probably coming. That's the next thing. So, yeah, you now have to take road courses a little bit more seriously. You're going to have to definitely pay more attention, be more prepared. They're not just uh, one-offs anymore. Uh, you know, they're, they're not something that is um, unique to the schedule anymore where you'd show up once or twice a year and, and, you know, just hope for the best. Now these teams really have to be prepared and incorporate this into their schedule, into their planning, into their prep, and be ready for it because they're a large chunk of the schedule. Well, you know, and, and I want to talk about, you know, one of the, one of the I guess, the surprises. And it's been rumored for a while that uh, NASCAR was looking at possibly, you know, going to Bristol Dirt. And I know there's been a big fan outcry for it. And NASCAR said that's part of the reason, you know, they listen to the fan base. But, you know, this is the first time, and I, I don't know, I mean, we're talking decades at this point, lots of decades that NASCAR at the cup level has had a dirt track on the schedule. And obviously we know trucks have been running at Eldora for a few years, and it's always, um, you know, well tuned in on TV and, and because it's something different. But, you know, this is, wow, Kelly, I mean, this is big. You know, we talk about road courses. Yeah, there's a little bit of change. But going dirt track racing for NASCAR at the cup level, I mean, this is a massive, massive change and a different approach for these teams for that one special event. Absolutely. It's going to be really unique. It's going to be different. It's going to throw these teams for a loop. It's going to see, it's going to keep them on their toes for sure. And especially the drivers, I think it was what 1970 was the last dirt race, I believe, or I could be wrong. It might be even longer than that. I think it was Richard Petty at, at in Raleigh, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. So it's been quite a while. Um, you know, Bristol has done it before. They hosted the World of Outlaws in 2000 and 2001, so they feel very confident that they know how to transform the racetrack into a dirt track. So they've got that going for them, and they think that this is the place where the cup cars will put on a good show. I'm trying to be optimistic. I'm trying to go in open-minded. I don't know exactly why we have to put cup cars on dirt, but, again, I appreciate the fact that we are trying to shake things up. We are trying to do things differently and you know, give these teams a little bit of everything to navigate to be the best in any given season. So um, Bristol Motor Speedway did cite that it was fan demand as to why they are doing this. They said they've had people ask for this for many years. So now they've got it, and let's see how it works. So I'm trying to be optimistic. I know it is going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to tune in because it's something different and something new. Uh, you know, dirt racing fans are going to probably be very interested to see how NASCAR pulls something like this off. And again, it's the first time in a very long time that the Cup Series teams and drivers are going to have to deal with a scenario like this. So once again, why not? It's going to be exciting and just trying to, like me, just try to be optimistic and positive about it. Yeah, well, and I know, you know, one of the other big stories coming out, it's, I feel like NASCAR, they, they've had so many big stories the past week or two pop up. And I, and I mean that in a good way. I mean, there, there's so much positivity coming out of 2021 and looking at the future. And I mean, you know, if there's been one organization that somehow figured their way to maneuver through this pandemic and get people excited about next year, it's definitely NASCAR. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, one of the uh, one of the biggest news in, in all of sporting, you know, this past month was the announcement that uh, Denny Hamlin, Michael Jordan and Bubba Wallace, they have a new cup team. I mean, what's your take on this? I mean, I, I don't know how this can be bad. I mean, I, I'm looking at this going i know michael jordan's had uh you know he's had uh i think ama superbike teams in the past he's been involved in motorsports big motorsports fan obviously denny he's you know one of the current generation stars of nascar and then you bring in bubba wallace who uh you know by and large is probably one of the future stars of nascar obviously you know his stock has definitely increased over the last season or two but you know i'm looking at this as a big play i mean this is going to bring a lot of new eyes into nascar i think well that's the hope right is that attention like this and news like this is going to reach more than just our bubble. And I think we've already seen that because even with the announcement, which didn't have many details to begin with, other than Denny Hamlin, Michael Jordan are going to be the, they're going to be the team and Bubba Wallace is going to drive for them. It was already reaching mainstream media and websites and news organizations that normally probably wouldn't write an everyday NASCAR story. So that right there gets the buzz rolling 
now they can keep that going when they announce a car number, when they announce sponsors, when they announce their manufacturer and their team name and all this other stuff. They they can carry that forward to really create a lot of attention going into next year. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I, I'm going to be curious to see how this looks long term. You know, I definitely think to your point, it's going to put some eyeballs on the sport and everybody's going to be curious of how it goes and you know, definitely when you have Michael Jordan, who is a legend in the NBA, coming into NASCAR and, uh, you know, a lot of talk this year about inclusion and making this uh, more open and, uh, you know, for black people and black fans and black drivers and all this. And it's just that's a perfect combination. But I want to look long term and hope that it stays that way. Hope that this is a good thing for the sport in the long run. And it's not just one of those where everybody gets excited at the start of this and, and it kind of peters out. So, you know, hopefully they'll be competitive, that they'll get the right cars and the right equipment and the right people in the right places, and it can actually be a team and be a storyline that is consistent week to week, uh, is a good thing week to week, has people talking week to week, and that would be the best way to keep people interested in the sport. Yeah. Well, and talking about, uh, you know, exciting news. I mean, obviously we are in playoffs right now with NASCAR. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is crunch time here. I mean, obviously we're, uh, you know, down to, uh, the round of eight or excuse me, the round of 12 and, uh, we're going to Talladega, Kurt Busch coming off a big win there at Las Vegas. I mean, uh, what do you, what do you think over the next two rounds or, or the next two races? I mean, we've got, uh, Talladega, we've got Charlotte, we've got the Roval as we talked about, you know, I know Kevin Harvick's got a lot of momentum, but, uh, Kurt Busch taking that first victory there of uh, the round of 12 in Las Vegas. What, what do you think we've got upon us here at uh, Talladega and then at the Roval? I mean, two vastly different tracks back-to-back. Well, two vastly different tracks and two wild cards. I, I, I think that goes without saying. I, I, think, I, think the wild, I think the wildness of the Roval the last two years has proven that it can definitely shake things up in a hurry. So, And, and we know Talladega is going to do that. I mean, that's just natural. So I think this is wide open, to be honest with you. I know Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin have very healthy points gaps going into Talladega, but that could be wiped out this weekend. You know, one big big crash or lack of stage points or whatever it may be, and somebody like a, somebody else like a Kurt Busch, you know, maybe an Eric Almirola or Austin Dillon, somebody goes and takes advantage of it, and it's really going to keep turning this playoff grid on its head. So I think it's great for the sport that we have these two races coming up that really are going to keep things wide open. It's going to keep the drivers on their toes. Nobody but Kurt Busch, as for right now, can breathe easy and enjoy what's going to happen. So I think Talladega will be typical Talladega. I really expect it to shake things up. Uh, You know, I think we're going to have some accidents, of course. I mean, we had a crazy finish in the spring with uh, Eric Almarola sliding backwards across the start finish line and a photo finish. And I just, um, I think this race will play into that. I think this race will play into the unknown. I think it's going to play into the unpredictability. And we could see somebody go up there and take advantage of it. Or you can see somebody who's not a playoff driver go up there and do it. So it just, there's a lot of X factors. There's a lot of variables this weekend that I think are going to really keep this playoff grid tight going into then the elimination race at the Roval. And again, as I said, the Roval's proven it's worth. It's proven that it can shake things up. It could come down to the last lap and cars trying to get to the start finish line damaged and people spinning in the final chicane. And I'm excited. Again, I think this is great. I think this round really, really shapes up nicely. NASCAR did a great job kind of positioning these races because, again, it's just going to keep everything wide open. Yeah, I agree. Well, Kelly, we are up against the time break, uh, but it's always fun catching up. Thank you for uh, for calling into the show. Have some fun down there at Talladega. I'm looking forward to tuning in on TV, and uh, I think the next two rounds between Talladega and Charlotte, uh, the Roval, are going to be exciting. Absolutely. Well, I always appreciate you having me on. It's been very busy, exciting times, and Again, I think that's going to continue Sunday, so appreciate it. And we'll be back after this on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. 
If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter 